Hey guys, this is a game me and a buddy have been playing recently called Outward, and uh, it doesn't have a very good map in this game, or a minimap at all, and uh, I thought it'd be cool to try and solve that with auto hotkey, so I'll go ahead and show you the map here, and it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's whatever, it's passable, but it's not great. So I decided to make my own uh, minimap with auto hotkey, which I'll show you here. So uh, there it is in the bottom there. And you can see that it does update my position. It also rotates the arrow with the camera. You can move it around. Uh, it is an overlay, so you can move it uh, on a different window, a different monitor, or whatnot. And overall, it, it turned out pretty nice. Eventually, I'll add uh, waypoints and um, zooming and stuff. But I've just been so busy with uh, making the maps. It's so fun that I haven't really gotten to that yet. But it's not really that difficult. So I'm going to go ahead and go to another zone so I can actually show you the map making process. But I'll go ahead and speed this section up right here. Okay, and we're here. So I'll go ahead and um, start entering this next zone and basically I'll explain why, how I'm doing this is that I'm injecting um, code into the program that allows me to reroute functions or just change effects and stuff so uh, find player address, camera address and stuff and you can just tell the program to instead of updating the address to send it to a code cave instead where my program can take over and because of that, it can work in basically every game. You just have to uh, reverse those memory memory addresses. Um, so here we are into the next zone, just loaded up. I already have a map made for this one, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how I made it anyway. Now to show you how I made it, I actually have to pull out a separate tool uh, specifically for doing the map scanning. Uh, so I'll go ahead and open that really quick. Alright, so it's got a few features. Basically, most of the stuff you'll need for setting your map up, like um, time of day, level of detail, and stuff. So, I'll go ahead and get rid of the minimap here while we do this. And I'll start by enabling FreeCam so I can start flying around and you can get kind of a good view and overview. This lets you um, give a better idea of what it's going to look like, set up time of day, level of detail and stuff. So this is all done auto hotkey. Um, the moving around, I just have a camera class and I I just do some some maths and stuff to determine where the camera should go when you're holding down WASD and whatnot. So I'll go ahead and increase level of detail here. And you can have it be really low if you just want to get the terrain, or you can have it somewhere in the middle to get some of the trees, some of the buildings, or you can just crank it all the way up and just get the highest detail possible, which is what I like to do. I like to have a very detailed map. So, next thing you can do is, uh, oh, I'm going to set the time scale to zero here, actually. And this, this pauses a lot of the stuff that would uh, affect capturing. Um, so I can set the time of day here as well, and I usually like to get um, an image that has good shadows, or a little bit of shadows. If you go noon, you don't get any, but sun's straight down. So I usually go around 16 to 18, and I think I'm just going to settle on 18 here, maybe. Yeah, I'm just settle right on 18. So I can just clear the weather too. It gets rid of all the the fog and stuff. Gives you a much clearer picture. Um, so now that I got that set up, I can start the scan process. But I actually have uh, my program incorporates uh, GIMP as well to do the scanning. I just found that it was really convenient to be able to to use GIMP to do that. I have the whole map selected right now in GIMP, and I'm going to go ahead and start the scan. Uh, there's a few different um, scan parameters for resolution, sort of, like accuracy. I have it set to a pretty high one right now, or a pretty low one, I guess, so it's not going to be super 
accurate. It's just going to be a fast scan, just get the, the the base map scan. So I'll go ahead and speed this up too, and I'll see you when it is done. Alright, so it's done. Uh, it took about 12 minutes there. Um, so, it's actually hard coded where it's saved as well as the width and height here. So, it should be saved as map example, which it is right here. So, I can open that up with GIMP. And this is what we just got. We can close the other one, we don't need that anymore. So, this is what we just now scanned in the last 12 minutes. And it came out looking pretty good. Um, it's not. It's not the best. There's a few blocky areas here and there, but for the most part, it looks pretty good. Now, since my program uses GIMP um, to determine where to rescan, I can actually find an area that I don't like, like down here, and I can use GIMP to rescan this area with a higher uh, resolution, sort of. Uh, that's a mistake right there, but it can be easily fixed by rescanning, so. Um, I have keybinds on my numpad here to determine what type of scan to do. So I'm going to do a scan of 7 pixels by 7 pixels. So it's scanning right now. It shouldn't take very long. It also works in the background here, so you don't even have to have the window active. You can be doing other stuff while it scans. So it's done now. I'll revert the image, and there you go. So it has a higher resolution now, and it just looks better overall. You can do this for other areas like this, where it incorrectly um, it incorrectly scanned that little area there. So there you go, that's done. And fixed. And you can do this with all the little areas in the map that aren't quite right. You can you can go in and increase their, their quality. Um, so this building right here, for instance, it doesn't look that great. There's some noticeable blockiness to it. So I'll set up an area here, press my scan, and I'll say it'll take a few seconds here to get this one done. It is a bigger area. The higher quality you go, the longer it takes, so you really have to keep that in mind. Uh, this It's something that you could do, or if you wanted a super high quality map, you could just leave it on overnight as you sleep, and you'll get a, a really good result. But it's done now, so I'll go ahead and reload the image from disk, so it'll update. And there you go, it just looks better now. Less blockiness there. But that map's... Um, it's okay, but I already made this map, like you saw before. So I'll show you what it actually looks like after it's been completely finished. So here you go. And um, I have four separate looks here. I have the This is the base right here. This is exactly what you get after you scanned and after I've done some touch-ups to it. And it looks pretty good. But since we're already in GIMP, we can use the um, color tools to make this look even better. So here's what it looks like after I've edited the color a bit and just made it a little bit more vibrant, a little bit less dull. Here's what it looks like if I sharpen it up a little bit. Um, it's it's not bad, you know. It's 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 a quick thing. And then this is what it looks like if you wanted like a kind of like a cartoony-ish, like. Um, smeared sort of look that makes things look a little bit more, more noticeable maybe but like less detail so these you know there's four separate images you could have a mini map in any style so whatever you whatever your personal preferences i'll go ahead and show you some of the other maps i've made really quick so this is the first map and this is what it looks like by default it looks a little bit washed out but it's got good quality to it and this is what it looks like after I've applied a little bit of um, color, color matching, color vibrance to it, a bit of sharpness, and then uh, again, if you really, if you wanted that like kind of weird, simple look, um, but you could you could really do anything you want with this. Uh, so next map, 
this is like a swampy one and by default it's pretty it's pretty dull looking so like, I think the biggest thing with 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 this is just always editing your colors so I think it really makes it pop a little bit more but all these maps um, turned out pretty good and then this is like yeah, this is all scanned auto hotkey you can't download these online like uh, you you know, there's no repository for maps for random games, so being able to just make them auto hockey anytime you want, any game you want, is is pretty awesome. And here's another map. Um, another thing is is uh, you can increase the quality beyond just the map size, because the map size in the game is 2,000 by 2,000. So I just make the the picture map the same size, but you can actually increase that to a much higher number if you wanted to, say. Um, for instance, 8,000 by 8,000, you can like quadruple it. So that's what this image here is. So I'll go ahead and load that up for you. So this is an 8,000 by 8,000 render of the same map. I've only scanned it one time because it does take a while. But even still, with just one scan, it still you know comes out looking good. So here's a comparison between the two maps. You can see one is uh, significantly higher quality than the other one. You really get to see quite a bit more details out of it. And you could really make it as detailed as you want. You could have an insanely detailed map if you wanted to. It just takes longer. Um, here's some other areas. Um, this area is a little bit glitchy down here because I was testing some stuff out. I was kind of using this big map as like a playground to test some stuff. But you can see there's uh, another zone. I'll compare it to the, um, the other scan that I did with low resolution. And you can really make out the details pretty significant. Um, however, it doesn't really matter when you're doing a minimap, because you're really only going to be seeing uh, from a certain view anyway. You're not really going to zoom in super, super far, so when you really compare the two, they're not that much difference. If you were to shrink the 8K version down, there's not that much difference to it. As you can see here, they look pretty similar when viewed at about the same the same uh, distance. So that's pretty cool though. But also, like I said, this does work on other games, like I was saying before. So I tried out another game called Forest, and that's what I got here. Um, this is a little bit of a bigger map, 3500 by 3500. So I didn't put as much work into this one. I scanned it a few times and fixed some areas, and it ended up looking pretty amazing. I don't know if I'd use this for a mini-map, because it's so detailed. I think it would be more beneficial to have the terrain. Um, this area up here is a little bit bugged out, because I was actually going through the mountains when I was scanning it. But it's super detailed. Tons of um, rocks and stuff on the ground that's, that, uh, that spawn in the game. Um, there's a center here, crashed helicopter, a little cave in the middle. Um, I really like the shadows in this one. I think it looks really nice with all the trees and everything. It just turned out really cool. And like I said, this is a different game entirely, so all I had to really do was plug in a lot of the same stuff. Like I had to find player address, camera address, um, level of detail, uh, time of day, things like that. And and I had to hard code like um, a new um, uh, width height and the uh, the title and executable name, but pretty much everything else is the same. So that one looks pretty cool. I was pretty happy with this one. I thought it turned out pretty well. But that's pretty much it. Um, I'll probably try this in a bunch of other games because it really is fun just making maps and just seeing what it looks like from a bird's eye view up above. It's it's really cool, and I thought that would be cool to share with you guys some of the stuff you can do with Auto Hockey. Really fun program. Had a ton of fun programming it, but uh, that's going to be it for today, so I will catch you guys later.